So what are linear time invariant systems? Let us start our discussion with what is a system. So we can say that system is just a transformation that is if we are given an input x of t so the system would transform that x of t into an output which we can term as y of t so the system governs the input output relationship so let us say that system is a vehicle and the input to this vehicle is an acceleration pedal so we apply a force on that acceleration pedal and the system which is this vehicle transforms this input x of t which is the pedal in terms of rotation of the wheels so depending on the force applied on the acceleration pedal we would have an appropriate speed of the vehicle so say we are applying a force of 10 units and this translates to a speed of 50 km per hour. Now if we apply this force say at 10 am or at 10 pm, it doesn't matter. We would again have this 50 km per hour of a speed. So this means that this system is not varying with respect to time. So therefore it is a time invariant system. That is a system which is independent of time shift. That is if we have an x of t minus say t naught. So the output would translate to y of t minus t naught. So that is it is a time invariant system. So next let us discuss what is linearity. For a system to be linear, it must satisfy two properties. The first property is homogeneity, which is that if we have an input x of t and we scale it by a factor say alpha, so the system would have an output which is y of t and that output would again be a scaled version with respect to alpha. That is in this vehicle, previously we applied 10 units. So now if we apply say 20 units, which is two times times the initial consideration of 10 as an input. And hence the output would be two times 50, that is 100 kilometer per hour. Or maybe we can switch the gear to reverse mode and, and then apply a force of five units. That is now we have minus 5 units. So this would relate to this 10 multiplied by minus 1 by 2. And hence our output would be 50 times minus 1 by 2. And that is minus 25 kilometer per hour. So whichever constant we multiply at the input, that would also multiply with the output that is a y of t. Now this was the first property, the second property is additive property. And this says that if we have two inputs, x1 of t plus x2 of t, and if we pass it through a linear system, so the output would be the transformation of each of these inputs, that is y1 of t plus y2 of t. So we have a summation over here at the output, each term of the output in the summation relates with its particular input term that is x1 of t. So citing the same example, say with respect to time, we have applied different units that is 10, 20, 30 and so on. So say at this point we have applied 10 units. Next we have applied 20 units and then we have applied 30 units of force on the pedal. Now this sort of an input is basically referred to as x of t. That is we can synthesize this input into sum of individual inputs. The first one is at 10 and let's say this is x1 of t. Then we have x2 of t and similarly we have x3 of t. 
this is 20 and 30 now this would relate to individual inputs in term of speed at the output so for example over here we would have a speed of say at this time unit we would have a speed of 50 and then 100 and then say 150 right so if we add all of these outputs so eventually over here we have this as an output y of t that is sum of inputs to a linear system leads to sum of outputs and therein each output is linked with the transformation of its particular input right so this defines the additive property now combining these two properties together we have something which we call as a superposition theorem and this is simply we have x1 of t plus x2 of t linked with y1 of t plus y2 of t so this is from the additive property and from the homogeneity property say so this is alpha this is beta so we have an alpha here and then we have a beta here that is the weighted sum of responses of the system to the weighted sum of signals hence linear and time invariant systems that is LTA systems or rather simplification of more generic kind of systems for example this car is not an LTA system but for the analysis purpose we have assumed it to be linear or linearized it somehow and by doing so we can perform the Fourier and Laplace analysis on such LTI systems. So that is if we have a linear time invariant system. It has an input and an output that is x of t and y of t. So say if we give an input of an impulse that is a signal which is having a very small duration and it has infinite amplitude that is the input is delta of t so if we apply this signal as an input to the LTA system the output would be an impulse response h of t that is a response to the input which is an impulse and say that response is like this a simple analogy over here can be a hammer which is having an impulsive hit and the reaction to that is the output which we can term as the impulse response now this impulse response for an LTA system this characterizes the system fully that is if you have h of t so you don't need to consider what was the original system so maybe you can consider it as a black box so having h of t means that we have understood the system fully so given that we are having a new input say this is our new input and this now passes through the LTI system which is kind of a black box to, to us now but we have the impulse response that is h of t so the output y of t would be linked with h of t and the input say this input is g of t g of t by an operator which we call as convolution and this is represented by a steric that is we would have a convolution of g of t with an impulse response h of t and eventually we would have this signal which is our output y of t more details about this convolution is done in the card above also note that y of t which i mentioned as h of t convolved with g of t which was the input this is 
refer to as a particular solution of maybe a differential equation or a zero state response but assuming that our system also have some sort of initial conditions the input is g of t and the total response as y of t now this as a whole is not LTI but we can break it down into two separate systems and then we can find the output response of each system independently so that is we can have a plus here and we can have a zero input response that is a zero or a transient response an application of this type of a system in time domain is done in this example whereas finding the total response by means of Laplace that is in S domain is done in this example in the following two videos we have some solved examples for the determination of linear systems and time invariant systems